Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Football United as we lead up to the first leg of the second semi-final between Hyderabad FC and ATK Mohan Bagan. This one's going to be really, really exciting because Hyderabad FC are featuring in the semi-finals for the very first time. All right, welcome our experts Pradyum Reddy and Paul Macefield. Mace, what can we expect from the fact that, well, this consistency on both sides, Hyderabad FC have kept their head coach, they've kept majority of their players, ATK Mohan Bagan, well, they want to go ahead and win everything. What are we expecting? Fireworks. Simple as that. Because uh, I think there was a little bit of needle, particularly in the second game that these two sides played towards the end of the season. And I think that we might see it just explode a little bit because ATK, Mohan Bagan will be upset for, for the second year in a row. They've lost on the final day of the season, yeah. so they haven't won the Shield. They'll want to go all guns blazing. But Hyderabad are the side, I think, they're the, they're the neutral's favourite. I mean, let's be honest about that. The way they play football, Manolo the, the, has been fantastic, developing the Indian players, bringing on these youngsters, the spine of that team with Obeche banging the goals in for fun all the way down to one and the experience there and Xiao Victor in the middle of the park. So I'm expecting proper, proper fireworks in this one. Brad, also, let's revisit now that last season Hyderabad FC lost out on the semi-final spot in their last league stage game. They stuck with the coach, they stuck with the core of their team. Consistency has played a major part. Yeah, I think we looked at it last season, maybe was that a season too early for them. But you look at it, the neutrals, everybody wanted Hyderabad. They were their neutrals favourite team because of the young Indian players coming through. You had a coach that's very likeable. You had a team that sort of played attractive football. So they kept with them. They kept with the coach. They kept with a lot of the same players as well. But they strengthened in areas where they needed to and players were going to make them and they were experienced players. There's people who had experienced the bubble and experienced Indian football. And that's what's made them now. They're still, I think, the neutrals favourites. Everyone, the neutrals will all be supporting Hyderabad. And I think there's a little bit of extra support for them, especially from us, because I think there was a stage where you thought it's going to be between them and maybe a jump shit pool for, for the player spot. Then COVID case hit them and they couldn't put a strongest team out. In their last game, it was even, was it Javi Severio had the uh, the purple uh, goalkeeper's <laughs> jersey printed and ready to go on because that's how depleted they were. Yeah. And so now, hopefully, by the time the semi finals, they're at full strength because you want to see a full strength Hyderabad FC taking on all comers. All comers. <laughs> all right. And you know, Mace earlier said that we can expect fireworks in this semi final, but the road for Hyderabad. The FC all the way to the semi-finals hasn't been short of fireworks as well. Take a look. Hyderabad is chasing finals glory. Oh, that could be a penalty and it is. What a breakthrough moment here for the two-time champions, Chennai in. Sweet victories for Chennai. The agony of it all, the frustration is for Hyderabad. Hyderabad have never beaten Mumbai City in four attempts. Two draws, two losses. We are away here. Aniket with the assist, the end of a wonderful team move, and part of Beche for his new club against his old club. It's the super sub, Rohit Danu, the 19-year-old. And here he is with his first ever Hero Indian Super League goal. Hyderabad, they're in dreamland. Hyderabad, who finished just outside the top four last season, host Bengaluru with both sides locked on four points. Here is Badabeche. There is the breakthrough goal. What an amazing save. Hyderabad prevail. They propel themselves into the top four. Hyderabad unbeaten in three matches. King Bart has done it again. A double celebration for Hyderabad. What a contest we had. It's 5-1, but a couple of late goals made all the difference. So in the end, I think deserved all three points for Hyderabad. Hyderabad extended its unbeaten six-match run when it hosts Odisha. What a bullet like header! The second goal of Hyderabad. What a scoreline. History again. A Beche's hat trick in the back of that. 6-1. Hyderabad have never scored six against any side. Hyderabad rewarded for 
continued success in the Hero Indian Super League. With second place Hyderabad and fourth place ATK Mohanbagan, both poised to reach for the summit here. He's the top scorer in the league with number nine. How about that for a finish from Sevilla? Quality, quality header. Congratulations to Hyderabad, who, for the first time in the club's history, go to the top of the table. He's done it again with the volley. It is that man, Vasquez. Hyderabad beaten for the first time in nine matches by a single goal from this man, the hero. Vasquez is the name. Kerala are at the top. A chance for a change at the top. And now a bitch it. Cool, calm as you like. So the header, the left foot, the right foot, the perfect hat trick from Barta Beche. Hyderabad back on the top of the hero ISL table. Hyderabad have been outstanding all season. They could extend their lead to four points at the top of the table. And Bartok Becce now the leading goal scorer in the Hero Indian Super League. The dominant performance once again from Hyderabad. A comprehensive 5 0 win for Hyderabad. A fascinating match Hyderabad FC against the Kerala Blasters. He's on Becce! He's done it again! Brilliantly done! And they've held on here for a, a wonderful victory. And how important is that? Because it puts Hyderabad into the semi-finals for the first time. What a fantastic it journey it has been for Manolo Marquez and the boys. But we have to talk about one particular player that they brought in. Now, Miss earlier, Brad, had said that they, they targeted certain areas that they needed strengthening and they brought in certain players. Bartholomew Ogbeche, it doesn't get stronger than that. Uh, no, not this season, does it? With 17 goals <laughs> yeah. sitting at the top of the uh, goal scorers chart. He's brought that experience. We've mentioned, I think, all the way through the season about the spine and the experience that they have. But when you want someone who is an absolute leader on and off the field, when you you, you want someone who's a pin-up for some of these younger players, you want someone who can influence these kids, you want someone who's the ultimate professional, you want someone who's going to score goals, what do you do? You call Bart. It's, it's as simple <laughs> as that because he will guarantee your goals. But what about the other bunch of boys? I mean, you know, you always keep saying it's about the signings in pre-season. Now they can have six foreigners in their squad. Miss, have they picked exactly the right six? Have they put exactly the round pegs in those round holes? Yes, they did. Uh, and they even managed to change those six pegs in uh, January and get six round pegs in six round holes as well. We talk about the experience and Prad there was just talking about standards, right? Wanan, the spine of the team, won it before, top draw. Zhao, absolutely top draw, has been fantastic this year. Bart, Severio, youngster learning off everybody, right? Before they had Edu, Edu they've let go, they've now brought in Kamara that gives them that quality as well and arguably the best Asian player in Joel Kianese. So, yeah, you've got to get these signings right and you've got to have them bang straight down the spine of your team. If not, you're not going to succeed. Yeah, well well said, Mace, absolutely. Brad, we also have to talk about the, the core of the team, the crux of everything, the Indian boys over there, the young Indian boys, the future of Indian football. Have they done... I mean, exceptionally well, even in that department, they've given so many new boys into the Indian national team. And do you think they've done better this year even than they did last season? In a way, yes, because one of the tricks in this league over the years, you know, just a cliched one is every person who's won the Emerging Player of the Year award, what happens the second season? You get the sort of sophomore slump yeah, and then the yeah. second year, they're not good. You look at Mishra. We thought, is he going to maintain that same standards? Is he going to plateau? Is he going to get better? He started adding goals. He started adding assists to his game. So he's definitely gone up. On the flip, on the opposite wing, of, you look at Ashish Rai. He's going from strength to strength. You look at Danu. You look at Hitesh at the start of the season. You look at Yasir. You look at all these players when they've come in. 
because of the competition for places now in the team, if you take your foot off the pedal, whether it's in training or in a game, there's an Aniket Jada, there's a Nikhil Pujari. So there's such strength and depth yep. that you cannot take your foot off the pedal. Let alone, you know, in a game maybe, but certainly not, you can't even do it in training at that club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think Manolo and the entire Hyderabad team have done, is they've recruited so well that there's competition for places in every single department for the Indians. And that's what makes young players much better. Brad, you have the right personnel, you have the right techniques, you have the right uh, for everybody, you have the whole team around you. It comes down to mental strength in matches like a semi-final, especially when you're going off uh, in front of an ATK Mohan Bagan, and especially when you're putting out so many youngsters in the squad. You think it'll come down to mental strength at the end of the day? It always comes down to mental strength in these semi-final, final kind of games. But I think, having you know, with my experience with, the, with youngsters in Indian football, the youngsters aren't actually your problem in these games because they play without a fear. They just go out there and say, go and enjoy yourself. It's your first time, friend. You're going to have many of these semi finals. It's the senior players sometimes, you know, your Kutti sometimes, your Shorviks or your Nickers can overthink it, and those could be the ones. But on the opposition side, it's how can they handle it? They've lost today in a game, you know, in a, in a game the ATK Monbagan should have, could have gone all the way. They lost it. So the pressure's on them. So they're the ones who I think will actually be in panic mode when it comes to those crunch situations rather than the young players. Young players play without a fear, and I think they'll. That's, that's the beauty of having so many youth in your squad. All right, we'll continue talking about this on Football United. It's time for a short break. On the other side, we look at Hyderabad FC's opposition in the semi-finals, ATK Mohan Bagan. Stay with us. Welcome back to Football United. We look forward to the first leg of the second semi-final between Hyderabad FC and ATK Mohan Bagan. Now, we have to talk about ATK Mohan Bagan. So, of course, the first question is going to be, they lost out on being the Shield winners this season on the last game of the league stage to Jamshedpur FC. Mace, how hard is it going to be for them to lift themselves up, dust themselves off, get back in the saddle? How hard is it going to be to recover from that? Well, look at what happened last year. They did recover for the semi-finals because they managed to get themselves through to the final against Mumbai. But this year, can they do it against what will be a much, much different team that they'll go up against in Hyderabad? It's never easy when you lose such a big game, particularly when it's in your hands, really. So there's a lot of pressure on them because of what they've bought in, the signings they've made, the players that are there, and the money that they spent to bring that there. It is a team that demands success. Yeah. So you've got to get rid of all of this baggage that you're talking about there. Can they do it? Are they good enough? Is the pressure? Is that? That's got to go. You've just got to go out there and win. It's as simple as that. So you've got to get rid of all of that and have a go. Fred, let's not forget that compared to Manolo Marquez, who's now his second season with Hyderabad FC, Juan Fernando actually came in halfway through the season this time with ATK Mohan Bagan. And now these boys are pretty new, pretty fresh with him, having played half a season. Is his task more uphill to motivate the boys to, to kind of rally his troops? Let's go for the cup now. We can still win the cup. I think his tough task isn't his players. A tough task is himself. And what I mean by that is even last year he made... So he's been in this league. This is the second season. He got to the semi-finals last year with FC Goa. And the same kind of characteristics which he displayed last year at FC Goa are coming back to haunt him in a way at ATK Monbagan. Right. It's a bit of a tinker man syndrome changes for the sake of making changes. If you look at all the other teams, you know what Vukumanovic is going to play with his lineup. You know what system he's going to play, what players will play in certain positions. You know pretty much with Owen Coyle exactly what you're going to get. It exactly what says something. You get pretty much exactly what you're going to get with Hyderabad in terms of the way they play, where they're going to play. You still don't know that with ATK Mohan Is Krishna going to be playing central? Isn't predictability a bad thing? Isn't instability a bad thing? When your players don't know where you're going to be playing, am I going to be playing out wide or am I being played number nine? Well, when he play, we play better when he's over here. So you're constantly changing. This is not the time for changes and experimentation. It's cost them in the last couple of games. They struggled to beat Chennai. They didn't beat jump ship on the end of the day. So he starts doubting yourself when you make these changes. Do you then go revert to something? When you have doubts as a coach, that doubt goes into your players because you don't have that clear thinking. And I think that can be their biggest weakness. They need to settle on what's their best way of playing, best formation, best players, and then go with it if it is the remaining three games for them. All right, ATK Mohan Bagan have made it to the semi-finals, although they lost out on the shield on the last day of the league stage. Let's revisit their journey to the semis. It's ATK Mohan Bagan who get us underway here in Victoria Goa. The goal will stand! It's the opening goal of the campaign! Delicate touch from Krishna. He'll look for the return. Slide it in for Krishna! The keeper comes. Krishna won't pull out. And pointing to 
the spot. A penalty for ATK Mohan Bagan. This man will never stop. That's double trouble here from Hugo Babu. It's a Colasso from Colasso. 4 2 is the scoreline. Cater comes to a standstill. It's Derby Day, so nothing else to do but support your team. We have a goal. It is one goal to nil. What a start here. This is absolutely sensational for ATK Mohan Bagan. It's a Derby victory again for ATK Mohan Bagan. It's three out of three for them in the Hero Indian Super League over these two seasons and it's a very richly deserved success. So the scene is set, the battle lines have been drawn, it's time for redemption perhaps tonight. We do find out whether ATK Mohan Bagan can secure their first ever triumph against Mumbai City at their fourth attempt. It's a dream goal! It's a Galasso to the young gun! That ball oh. from Atata Pearl, tap in onside, it's three! A Galasso from Bippen Singh! Absolutely outplayed today for ATK Mohan Bagan. It might be early days in the Hero Indian Super League, but ATK Mohan Bagan suffered their heaviest loss last time out. That is a colossal, if I've ever seen one. You talked about a lack of goals from this outstanding player. He's going for the goal! Lasso! Hubbas frustrated by what he's seen tonight. ATK Mohan Bagan Football Club have parted ways with their head coach, Antonio Lopez Havas. The new ATK Mohan Bagan coach, Ferrando, the special Juan. A big night for the Mariners. They climb into the top four. This is an ATK Malmbergan side that's been built for one thing only, and that is to win. ATK Malmbergan coming closest with that fizzed effort from Tiri. Jamshedpur are the hero ISL Shield winners. Desperation and despair for ATK Malmbergan. For ATK Malmbergan and one Ferrando, a reminder to look forward to the semis. The man who led them to the semi-finals, ATK Mohan Bagan, having made it this time, is Juan Ferrando, their head coach. And we caught up with him after the last league stage game where they lost out on the shield and this was how he reacted. Now, now it's it's time to don't, don't talk so much uh, because in front of us exists one semi-final in five days, half a shower, tomorrow is a new day and and try to do the best and of course to improve in uh, a lot of details because today we have not in, in the best performance. I want obviously you know, a tough pill to swallow tonight but where would you, if you were to put your finger on what would you do differently now if you could go back at the start of the game, would you, what changes would you possibly make? Ah, of course uh, it's necessary because when play against Hyderabad it's not the same when play against Yangelspur but uh, we'll see, we'll see now of course for us, today was a final, we prepared one plan, we have no success in the first half, we have no success in the second half. 
Uh, at the end, it's necessary to change the chip. It, to be honest, uh, now I have not planned. And now I'm, repeat, it's time to have a shower and then tomorrow is a new day. Of course, we prepare a new plan against Hyderabad because to play against Hyderabad is not so easy in my final. But we need to do the best and, uh, and to come back to the, the way of the win. When you talk about ATK Mohan Bagan, you have to talk about their attacking threat because just the sheer names of players that they have in their squad, all the way from Roy Krishna to David Williams and their Indian boys, Manvir, Liston, they have a really, really strong attack, Mies. Yeah, they do. But has he found the right balance? No, he hasn't because they, they're not doing what they should have done, which was win the shield. So, you know, he's got to find that balance. I think Prad touched on it a little bit earlier. Williams and Krishna, we haven't seen that. We've seen Krishna playing wide right. We've seen Manvir down the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. So all of a sudden, that rotation doesn't work. You've got Yoni Kalku, who, who likes to drop and likes to play those balls and has that quality and the ability. And then you put Bumu in there that just dribbles and takes other players out of play. Hasn't found the right balance for me. But at least one of the constants, or two of the constants in that 11, have been Liston and Manvir. Great, because Liston's actually going up against his former club in the semi-finals. Hyderabad FC gave ATK Mohan Bagan the gift of Liston Kulasso. So what do you think about that pair? They could be the game-changers. They could, but again, you have to use them right in the right way because there was a time in the season when they were playing a back three, weren't they, Mace? When you're playing with that back three, it allowed you to play with two strikers up there. And so when you're playing with two strikers, you can play with either Krishna and a Manvir. You can play with a Liston and a Williams. So your options are more because you've got players who play in those similar positions. So I think when he went away from that, he sort of tied his hands a bit. Yeah, he has tied his hands a little bit. I mean, we know that basically he plays a 4-2-3-1. If you're going to do that, you have Liston on the left, you have Mambir on the right. It's as simple as that. You put Kalko in there or you put Williams in there, you have Krishna as your focal point. It's not rocket science. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. What you have to do is put out the 11 that's going to win it for you. But Liston is an absolute must. I think he's been magnificent this season. Praetor came on, began throughout the season. And I think Mambi has proved now, going back to back seasons, by emulating exactly what he did last year, that he's arrived and that he's come of age. But they need to be used correctly. Is the tactics, is the formation right? If they win, yes. If they don't, no. And we'll only know that on the 12th, Pratt. However, you've said that the best teams actually just kind of edge these results out. Who do you think will edge it out on the 12th of March? I'm only asking you about the first leg because everything can change in the second leg. I think you've got to look at Hyderabad because they've got the ability to defend well and create chances and the likes of Bach can score. They can score from, you know, there's, there's midfielders who can score. There's other players who can contribute with the goals. I think why I have a little bit of worry in a way about ATK Momagans, I don't think they're defending very well in the games. They actually give up a lot of chances for other teams. They've just been lucky with last ditch tackles, Amr in the making saves, or someone making it. I don't think they're defending as well as a unit as some of the other teams. I think Hyderabad, simple. That's it. I think really? they're I think that they're, confident. Yeah. No question. All right, we'll see. This game is on the 12th of March. It is the first leg of the second semi-final that is going to be played between Hyderabad FC and ATK Mohan Bagan. Now, whichever team puts out the strongest team, whichever has the best tactics, strategies, they're going to be the winners. Thank you, Mace. Thanks, Brad, for your thoughts. And thanks, everyone, for joining us on Football United. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.